some people might consider Grail Knights to be better than Crushers. That is a pretty interesting discussion, but it, maybe you don't consider the Grail Knights monstrous gavel, although they do pretty much behave like it. So I think the comparison is pretty apt, but for me, I think I'd probably go maybe towards the Crushers being the better unit overall. Um, even though, yeah, Grail Knights are still very good, but I believe, I mean, in unit caps... Technically, the Crushers are limited to three, I believe. But uh, anyway, yeah, here we've got this replay from Flying Taco. He is going to be showing the strength of the Ogres in their Crushers. Got three Crushers with great weapons here, including the Sky Striders, Regiment of Renown, and Noblar Trappers. We've got, uh, yeah, a couple of Lead Belchers as well. And the Saber Tusk Pack in the back. Yeah, some regular Noblars here. Again, Strat Games, Green Skins. He's got the Sneaky... Very strong, uh, although quite squishy, Night Goblin Warboss here on the Squig for maximum mobility. Or no, actually, on foot here for maximum cheapness, I guess. Got some Stone Trolls, Anti-Large, Boar Boy, Biggins, some Goblins here backed up by Squig Herd, some Savage Orc Air Boys for ranged, and uh, looks like the Swamp Things for some Terror, already trying to avoid the Crusher Hard Maneuver here, which is overloading many thousands of points of resources on one side of the battlefield, but this is why I rate Crushers a little bit better than Grail Knights. Their charge is actually more devastating, their mass is insane, and their melee prowess is just spectacular. I would consider basically the healing support for Crushers and Grail Knights to be more or less equal. Ogres have plenty of ability to heal, they also have better access to slows than Bretonia, and uh, overall I would say Bretonia is a stronger faction, but Crushers versus Grail Knights, I don't know. In a straight-up comparison, I'm not sure if he would actually win. I just... Yeah. Bretonia has a lot more options for cavalry. <laughs> Crushers do show their one weakness here, though, despite eating a Troll Guts. The leadership is quite poor, and the one that's not immune to psychology is uh, getting terror out of here. No, these guys are not actually immune to psychology. For some reason, I thought they also caused terror, but... Nonetheless, do cause fear, but still, Swamp Thing's there. Lead to one unit getting terror routed away. Fate of Yuna on those trappers. Interesting choice. Might have honestly just thrown the Fate of Yuna. I don't know, 12 models. The damage scaling is not super efficient on the Crushers, but let's get back in close. A lot of other fights happening, but this is where the majority of the value fight is going to be. See Green Skin's Wah popping off as the Crushers continue to get into that backline area. Saber Tusk Pack as well. Mobility uh, getting past the Greenskin's mobility, which is sort of operating out in the flanks a little bit here, doing some good damage for sure, but now rallying back to try and bail out those uh, Orc Air Boys. Definitely very good DPS if they can get free, but uh, the Crushers here in sustained combat, stats are not... well, some of their stats are not great. 120 armor is definitely spectacular with massive weapon strength. 30 bonus versus large, too, is huge, right? Um, Yeah, uh, just admiring the beauty of them as they charge back on in into these Savage Orc Air Boys. Very important to shut these guys down. Their armor-piercing damage is actually fairly good, especially if they're focused firing on a multi-model unit or a very large single entity can get hits. Their lack of accuracy matters less. Sky Strider's there getting the Troll Guts. Also a little Mither and Poison to try and slow them down as the Mither, mither breaks, though. They're able to pull away, form up with these other Crushers here and start to heal those stone trolls. Nice spite of the bad moon though from Strat Game here is gonna give a lot of units anti-large or at least those trolls for when they're fighting up to 150 weapon strength as well. It's 16 bonus versus large, it's quite impactful. Uh, they do dish out some extra damage, felling a few more of those crushers as they go, but eventually their troll leadership does give out. It does afford Savage Orc Air Boys a chance to get out in space a little bit here, but the mobility advantage starting to tell so far. <coughs> Excuse me. In uh, in Ogre's favor, yeah. Sky Striders, other Crushers now can collapse here, should they so choose. Yep, looks like Daco activates them to try and take out. Ooh, Spider the Bad Moon's basically just going to remove their melee defense and let them do what they were going to do anyway. Deliver a massive crushing charge in here, quite literally. Pun intended. Um, yeah, just kind of leaving the Night Goblin War boss to his own devices, although he's quite cheap. Not really a great way of sniping him directly. Um... Yeah. So I might as well just leave him, even though his abilities are pretty good as well. See just the beautiful, glorious charges here. Crushers, they ride on through. This 
smashing through these lines, especially with this many models still alive, because one of the benefits, too, of having such a low model count with high splash damage is that they lose killing power very slowly, and this is another big advantage over Grail Knights. I mean, Grail Knights are, what, more than double the unit models, right? So, um, just each model that gets killed, they lose a little bit of their fighting prowess. Now, the Crushers, on the other hand, with such a low model count, especially with Ogre's healing, be layering, uh, Troll Guts, obviously. What's the armor ability heal? It's just escaping me right now. But, uh, anyway... Yeah, just really can sustain them through a lot of damage, so that low melee defense isn't so much of an issue. The armor certainly helps against a lot of targets as well. And, of course, that massive weight allows them to escape many situations where... I don't know, Grail Knights also have very good mass, especially in lance formation, it must be said. And there's probably some other arguments to be made. You know, Grail Knights are a little bit more maybe responsive in terms of, like, their turn speed and, and responsiveness to commands... But uh, yeah, overall, Strat came putting up a good fight here, but just really did not have a viable answer to the Crushers, short of just dragging them down with a thousand cuts, which, you know, he definitely gave an effort to. But ultimately, Taco had enough threats um, to sort of position different things, like the Lead Belchers were mostly unthreatened the whole time because Strat game was forced to deal with such a mass of Crushers. Three is a lot, but at the same time... Even if one or two of them get shut down, the other one can still come in and, and potentially get some really good work done. That extra little Saber tu Tusk pack as well, just all this pressure um, with Strat Game having a decent kind of ranged component here. And then also the quality of his mobility is just not going to measure up, right? One or four boy big, it does manage to pay for itself, but in terms of cavalry quality, Greenskins cannot compete. They don't have anything on this tier, right? Um, even factions which do have monstrous cavalry on this tier are going to struggle to fight crushers in a direct manner. So, I mean, really, their low leadership and their relatively mo low model count means they can get swarmed by certain things. Um, but overall, great game from Taco, great game from Strat Game as well, and a fun one for sure. Yeah, we'll just quickly finish up with comparison here. The two best cavalry units in the game, uh, monstrous or otherwise, to be honest. Yeah, 1900 base cost for the Great Weapons. You also get the Iron Fist uh, Shield variant of Crushers, which is nice to bring into this comparison here. Um, you could almost say that, like, Guardians are sort of like a variant of Grail Knights as well, so let's bring them into this discussion. Um, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing to consider is obviously the difference in model count. Uh, Grail Knights have four times the unit models, which, you know, is, is definitely something to consider especially when you're fighting against uh, potentially, like, other cavalry units, which are, uh, like, let's say maybe... I don't know. I don't think Griffin Legion would trade well into either of these, but just, I don't know, stuff that has a higher model count, I guess. You could make an argument maybe the Grail Knights are a little bit better in that situation because they had, do have more unit models. They're not going to get isolated and uh, singled out as much. Rushers, though, are rocking an extra 1,000 HP on top of... You know, them being able to sustain their models potentially for longer. Likewise, melee defense, they're really not far off. Um, you know, the great weapons, of course, slightly less melee defense, but a little bit better of a charge bonus as well. The weapon strength and kind of splash damage situation. Um, what is it like? Three Grail Knights is about equivalent to a Crusher, so maybe the Grail Knights technically have slightly more DPS potential, but of course the back rank of Grail Knights is a lot less likely to actually get involved in combat and be getting hits. Whereas the full unit of Crushers is probably going to engage almost every time because there's so few of them, right? So it is a really interesting comparison. Two very different units, but occupy a similar niche. And in terms of cost and quality, they are the best in the game, I would say for sure. There's maybe you could convince me Grail Knights are better. Certainly if you have replays, of course. I mean, we've all seen Grail Knights doing mad work. It's not like I need to be showcasing that more. But especially if you have a... Maybe Taco can queue one of these up for me as well. A, a Crusher versus Grail Knight game. Especially a really close one that kind of showcases both units' strengths. It'll be interesting to take a look at for sure. But like I said, Bretonia, I think, is a more complete faction overall. They have just more flexibility and utility. Ogre's really lacking in, like, mid-range skirmish. You do have Lead Belchers, which are a nice option that, you know, Bretonia doesn't really have an equivalent to artillery-wise. Basically a wash. I mean, Ogre artillery is a little bit unique in its way. But uh, you do also have great monsters as Ogres. Stonehorns 
in many matchups are quite good, whereas Bretonia, of course, lacking monsters completely, but a much greater variety of cavalry, much greater variety of infantry, uh, standard infantry, if you will, and uh, both actually do sort of face obvious anti-large counters, so it's an interesting faction comparison as well between these two. There's a, there's a lot to talk about here. No doubt we'll dive into this matchup another time, but uh, that's it for today. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.